Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Coach Chapel. It is such a gift to be able to look out and see all you smiling faces and people that we love and love one another and old friends that are coming back to see us again, and we're thankful that y'all are here. I uh, wanted to share with you, we uh, had our first of the resurrected United Methodist Men's Breakfast yesterday morning. Uh, well, well attended, good food, and uh, it has been decided that the second Saturday, right Cliff, um, across the street, the fellowship hall, the men are going to get together, so uh, put that on your calendar and just try to remember second Saturday. Got a few announcements to go over, these are all in your bulletin. Um, and you don't necessarily need me to stand up here and read it to you, but let's do remember that we're not doing the offertory like we have in the past, and the offering is done in the Narthex. So, okay. No, I didn't see it in the bulletin. So, well, we are passing the plate. Think about being generous this morning. All right. Thank you. You can jump in and correct me anytime you want to. I need it from time to time. Um, would like to remind you about the um, auction, the silent auction, Southern Picnic and Silent Auction. This um, helps to support three missionary families that we do support here. So uh, be sure to come to that. That is next uh, Saturday on the 14th at 6 o'clock. And uh, here's a, a treat here. Come have lunch with Pastor Carson, Wednesday, August the 11th, and August the 18th. So, and that's going to be where? 12 o'clock under the pavilion across the street outside in the fellowship hall. Uh, Miss Betsy Bagley had a little something she wanted to say to us this morning. Do you want to come up or do you want to just, what you want to do? I'll just stay right here. Okay. Big voice. I think you can hear me. Hear me? Uh, two things. First of all, I want to read two texts. I wrote them down that I got Friday and Saturday. Here's the first one. Thank you so much. They were so happy. And they liked their teachers so much. And the shoes fit perfect. The other text. Hey, the kids wanted me to tell you to please tell everybody to thank everybody so very much. They had a wonderful first day of school. Those are the two texts. of the six and five children that we provided in school supplies. And I don't mean just a pack of paper. We, we really did the supplies. Um, a book bag that for each one of them that they loved, a new pair of shoes for every one of them, and um, something new to wear. Some of them it was an outfit, some of them a new shirt, so they all had something new to wear on the first day of school. And if we hadn't done that, they could have gotten some, we would have agencies around. It's so hard um, when you have six children or five children and are very limited to everything, to get everything you need. So they were so thankful. And so it was your generosity. You just, that's one week, and then we provided all that. Or the thank you, thank you. Uh, they were second graders through tenth graders, I mean. <clears throat> the second thing is the, um, the Southern Picnic and Silent Auction Saturday. Um, it's, still, it's still on right now. And remember, all the proceeds go to Who's the Haddens and the Earls. And uh, Who's the Haddens and the Earls? You yeah. can just know Who's the Haddens and the Earls. And I wanted to give you just a little idea of a few things we are going to have at the auction to bid on. Um, electric guitar. <clears throat> And it's worth over between four and six hundred dollars, and of course it'll start very low. And so, if you know anybody that's interested in electric guitar, here's your time. It comes from Keith, and you know he loves his guitars. <clears throat> we have a used laptop that's um, in good condition. Several original art pieces, artwork pieces from members and, and other people that you know. Um, Someone has two new Ethan and Allen side chairs. They're really pretty. And for some reason, they got them and don't, can't use them now. And so they're worth like $800 or something, you know, like some people pay for chairs. And, um, and we have a six-foot utility trailer. Now, how handy would that be for somebody? It's in very good condition. And that's just a few. I just picked out just a few things. We have
have a lot more, and we have a lot of jewelry, lots of jewelry, and a lot of vintage jewelry. And everything's not high priced or medium priced to some folks. We have things that start four dollars to bid on, so we have a lot of different different things. So bring your cash, check, or charge card, <laughs> and yourself. Now, all that being said, we also have some issues that I'm sure some of you have heard of. We have we have an AC issues in the worship center. Oh, no. Well, uh, we're certainly not going to have all of our people in there if it's not comfortable. Thinking that may be, you know, workable by Saturday. Another issue that everybody's aware of is that the COVID issue and. Um, Hopefully, we want everybody to be comfortable with the AC. We want everybody to be safe. And so we'll be watching that and, and talking about it. And, and hopefully, it will still happen. And, and people can come as they will or come in their mask or however we can do it to, to make people comfortable and safe. So be watching your, your emails. But as of right now, it's a go. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your ministry. Uh, a number of y'all have asked me, as soon as I came in, there was, how's Sandy? How's your Aunt Sandy doing? And I feel like you may want to know. Uh, Sandy's in the hospital in LaGrange with COVID. Her daughter, Tracy, one of my beloved cousins, and her husband, my Uncle Pete, uh, they went down there yesterday and met with the doctors and nurses to discuss whether or not she should be on a ventilator. And uh, she had started a, a medication and is doing a little bit better. Uh, and they decided not to put her on a ventilator at this moment in time. So I'm just going to ask you to be in prayer for her. Um, and I do have another announcement. And that, that one comes straight from God. And God wants you to know that he loves you. He loves each and every one of you with all of his heart. And he wants to be in a relationship with you. You are special to God. So let's worship this morning. And we need to read the bulletin and see what's going on. <laughs> Look at my wife. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Prepare your hearts. Gracious and loving Father. We are so thankful that you woke us up this morning. You've given us this beautiful day. You've given us everything. You've given us paradise. You gave us your son so that we might find redemption and spend eternity with you. We are eternally grateful for that, Father. We pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us as we worship. We pray for our pastor and for him to be guided by the Spirit, that same Spirit. And we pray that we are strong enough and determined enough and willing enough and faithful enough to go out into the community and claim the, proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray for that spirit to be with us as we worship. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing hymn number 121.
If you will, folks, you have your hymnal. Turn with me to page 881, and let's recite together our historic affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you, Larry. Thank you for everything you do, brother. Thank you so much, Luke, for everything you do, brother. Um, thank, amen, amen. Um, thank you, Brenda, for everything you do, sister. Where are you? Thank you, Brenda. Um, goodness gracious. This church knows how to show up and not just when, when life gets a little bit tough, when people need to fill in things. I've, I've seen it, I've seen it, but you just do it. It's part of the culture. You just know what it means to be a family. Um, there isn't a lot of probing and asking and deliberating and coaxing, thank goodness. It's just, hey, we have a need and we've got something that needs to get done. Is anyone available? And I've just been so pleased. Um, to get to be here, to get to be your pastor, to get to worship with you. But now it is time for a prayer. It's time for us to go to God. I want to do it a little bit differently. There's actually a, a type of a prayer that's in the hymnal that we can use, and it's, it's called, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And it's, it invites all of us to be a part of that. Would you turn to number 877 in your hymnal? And it's called Prayers of the People. And, and the idea is that I'm going to go through a few different areas that need prayer in our life. And after each one, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and we will all say together, hear our prayer. Together, let us pray. Let's go to God. God, we come to you right now and ask that you would come to us, that you would meet us. And together let us pray for the people of this congregation, those that are in need of you right now, those that are uh, feeling good and those that are feeling bad. God, you are with all of us. We pray for those in this congregation that have stepped up, that have lifted up, and that have proven your love is active and real through their own actions. And God, it gives me great hope to say, that I am thankful for the people of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for those who suffer and those in trouble. We pray for those right now that are, are hurting, that are weak, that are in hospitals, that just came home from hospitals, that uh, in some ways have come home from hospitals maybe early. But God, it's in your care, it's in your guidance, it's in your great physician's work that we place all of these folks in your mighty hands. God, we know that you are active and you're at work with those that are in suffering and those that are in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, God, for the concerns of this local community, Sharpsburg, Noonan, this area around Coke's Chapel and the family that's extended, that neighbors meet neighbors and people know people. And God, we pray that this community, as school has started, as life is starting to come back together, that God, we need you more than ever to be present in each interaction as we come into re-socialization in our communities. It's not so easy. We all have opinions. We all have things to say. We all have things that we think people should be doing, ought to be doing. But God, help us to lean into your spirit. 
Help us to lean into what you would have us do. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for the world. We pray for its people. We pray for its leaders. Holy God, if any time we need to lift up our leaders, our world, and the concerns of those that are, are in leadership, it's right now. We pray, God, that you would bestow upon them a wisdom, a humbleness of seeking after you, of seeking after wise counsel and their counsels. God, help us to not be arrogant and single-minded, but to open ourselves to those that are wise around us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church universal, its leaders, its members, and its mission. God, we know that your church is not just a little C, but a big capital C that stretches not just from Coke's Chapel, but all across Georgia, all across the United States, all across the world. People are bowing and claiming the name of Jesus Christ as their Savior. And they know that the one spirit, the Holy Spirit, is active in their lives, whether they live in this country or not. God, we're thankful that your spirit is bigger than ours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, we lift up the communion of saints, those that have come before us, those that have been faithful, those that have trod the ground that we get to walk on, they planted the seeds that now are trees that we get to bear the shade that they helped plant. God, we, we get to drink from the waters that people have dug the wells already and we get to enjoy the freshness of that water. God, the traditions that people have started that we get to carry on. The relationships that people have started that we get to continue to love. God, we pray for the communion of saints your great cloud of witnesses that's not just a pie in the sky in the clouds, God. It's a, a holy and active work that you receive people well beyond this earth. And God, we give you great thanks for that. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. And all these great things we ask in your holy and precious name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It is... It is a time, like I, I had said, I think at the, the beginning, that we're going to have a time of offering. And so I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. It's been a little bit, maybe, of time since we've been able to do it this way. It's all good. We're going to go slow. We'll go steady. We're going to have some music for you while you do it. But God, hear this blessing for our communion. I'm sorry, for our offering today. God, we know that financial offering is but just one of many different offerings that we give to you. But it's vital, it's important, and it's an act of worship that we give to you. God, we, we thank you for your many, many blessings that you give to us. Help us to bestow those blessings to many others in need. In your holy and precious name, amen.
To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you so much, Luke. Thank, you. Thank God how great thou art. How great thou art. Um, th this is what it's all about. And um, it's such a special opportunity to get to, to be before us, um, to get to, to share and worship and to be involved in what it means to be the body of and the biggest thing about being the body of Christ is giving praise where praise is due. Amen. Amen. How great thou art, God. It's not our praise, it's God's praise. And so every time we worship, we remember that. And the people that sing in choir, Brenda, Jenny, you know, Keith, and Brian, and Luke, and myself, and anyone that comes up here that does anything in music, they know that it's not about them. It's about God. And it's not about you when we sing together. It's about the God that we sing to. And we give our praise to that God. Our scripture today comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 through chapter 5, verse 2. Will you stand today as we hear the word of the Lord as you're able? So then, putting away falsehood. Let us all speak the truth to our neighbors, for we're members of one body. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, 
so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. You may be seated. It's a, I brought something over here I actually need to get. It's a, a really wonderful verse. And I think there's a lot there that sometimes it's easy to pass over so much richness of the word of God. You could read that over and over, much like the Lord's Prayer or the Sermon on the Mount of Jesus. It's so easy to hear the, some of the most amazing things of God and let it come in one ear and out the other and, and almost take it with, with a grain of salt or almost take it like it's um, easy come, easy go or, you know, yeah, it's so good I don't know what to do with it. It's like your grandmother's fudge that I don't know how they made it this amazing, but it's so good I don't even know what to, how to eat all of it. I have to eat it a little bit at a time. It's that rich. This passage to me has a little bit of that too. And I honed in on one verse and I even named it the sermon title, Be Imitators of God. Be Imitators of God. Is that arrogance? Is, is that uh, uh, the end of, of all? I mean, how would a human being imitate the creator of all of the universe? And, but here in Scripture, we're asked, therefore, after all these things, therefore, be imitators of God. So to, be, to imitate God, we have to really know God. I think to imitate God, you'd have to probably really want to know God. So I don't find it to be arrogance, but I do find it just an extreme thing to say, to imitate God. But that is yet our call nonetheless. The very beginning of this passage talks about putting away falsehoods. Put away all falsehoods. You know, speak truth to one another. Speak truth to your neighbors. And why? Because we're all members. We're all members of one body. It's an interesting thing to say. It's almost like, look, you say something that's false to one person. It's really not to benefit you. Maybe in the short term you might get away with something or it might prop you up or it might feel good for a moment. But in the long run, you're all connected. You're all one body. And you're only harming yourself. And scripture is so key and Ephesians is so riddled with what it means to be a holy and one body. That everything is about keeping the body healthy. Both spiritually and physically and certainly as a representation of that body to the world. So do not lie, basically, is what this is saying. Don't lie. Don't lie in your private life. Don't lie in your public life. <laughs> Don't lie in small ways. Don't lie in big ways. In fact, lying in small ways will probably lead you to lying in bigger ways before you even realize it. I think it's so easy to, to start down a path and say, well, yeah, but it would be so much easier if I just didn't mention this part of it. Or if I mention... Life gets complicated out there, doesn't it? 
See, uh, Scripture seems to point out to us that uh, if the pressure is so um, great, what makes you think that when pressure is small, I mean, if you can't handle some truth-telling, why when the pressure is great are you going to all of a sudden do it? If the, when the pressure is small, you can't really show love to your neighbor and forgive someone for something really kind of innocuous. What makes you think that you're going to be able to forgive someone when the real tough stuff comes? Well, that's a great question, and this scripture makes us go there, doesn't it? Scripture points us to live in the habit of speaking what is true. See, we live in a world of half-truths and partial truths and whole truths and nothing but the truths. True facts and false facts and new news and that's old news and dependable news and fake news and information and disinformation and misinformation. And I'm sorry, I think I missed your information. And did anybody miss this missing misinformation? See, it's complicated out there. Don't get it twisted. It is complicated. And if you just have your ears open and you're just an honest person that just wants to do what's right, it's not easy, is it? No, it isn't. And you know that just as well in the depths of your soul as anyone else. That's not easy. It can get hectic. But we as followers of the risen and reconciled Christ, we're meant to live differently. We're meant to do life differently than how everyone else does it. We're meant to be a marked, it says on here, you are marked a seal for the day of redemption. That's what that means, reconciled, redemptive, restored. You've been marked by Christ Almighty already to be a representation of what it means to be really truthful, healthy, a forgiven people acting in forgiveness. A forgiven people acting in forgiveness. A truthful people acting in God's truth. See, God possesses all truth. If it's true, it's of God. There are no contradictions in God. And what, what is... Uh, a contradiction in humanity is all possible, all powerful, and all present in God. So, I, of course, human beings are going to have contradictions. Of, of course, we're going to be blatant hypocrites, quite frankly. If, if we look at your life, like I, anyone that says, I've never done anything wrong. I've always been on the right side of every issue. I've always been, I mean, goodness gracious, that person won't have any more friends by the end of the week. Right? I mean, you know how it goes. It's, we'll, we'll bear with you. We'll try to kind of appease you a little bit for the well-being and trying to get along, go along to get along with you. But come on, man, at a certain point, this is going to be a difficult road, isn't it? And that's the stuff that I think it, that Paul is addressing in this letter to the Ephesians. So uh, take comfort that the world is not just in disarray all of a sudden and, and it's never happened before. Oh, it's happened. It's happened many times. It even has happened to this group of, in Ephesus. There's a reason why Paul needs to mention these things. You ever wonder why things need to ever get said in the first place? Why there need to be rules in the first place? Because someone broke them. Because someone decided to, to go on their own way in some different kind of manner that is really quite off from what it means to be healthy, truthful, loving in the spirit of the Holy Spirit. So things had to get said. Things had to get set right again. But that's our God. See, how could a God, though, be almighty and all merciful? That's the difference, I think, between human beings and God. There's a lot of differences. But goodness gracious, God is all divine, all righteous judge, all uh, warrior spirit that is capable and willing and able and will not tolerate evil and sin, not even a little bit. 
but is also a gracious comforter. Able and willing to forgive that same sin. Uh, our God is one who both made the world and both sustains the world. Uh, a God who's both capable of giving us the law, the precepts, the principles. And then the same God that's willing to offer us grace when we don't follow it. I mean, look at the church. Look at Israel in the, in the Old Testament. Sometimes we look at these folks wandering around in a desert complaining that God isn't giving them enough. And we say, oh, can you believe these people? Oh, can you believe? Uh, look at them. Didn't they not, did not see the miracle of God delivering them? Oh, they saw it, but then they quickly forgot it, didn't they? And how, how easy I think it is for us to do the same thing. God's in our very midst. God's in our very midst, always at work, but is both a righteous judge and a gracious comforter. And no human being is capable of such a thing, but we're meant to try to imitate it. We're meant to at least aim to imitate the God of all rule and law and the God of all grace and forgiveness and mercy. It's no easy task for a human being. But if we're made in the image of God and we have been restored and reconciled through Christ, then maybe, just maybe, there really is hope for us all. And there really is a God that doesn't just say it without meaning it. It's, a, it's to imitate who God really is. It means to look people in the eye and be honest with them. It means to not lie at least. It means to give all of the story. It, it means to enter into a, a contract with people that says, ah, I want to be dependable with you. I want you to be able to come back to me tomorrow and still be able to get something dependable from me. It means I, I want an honest relationship. I truly want what's good for you, not just what I think will get me what I like with you. It means seeing people for their best, not for their worst. It means believing that people truly have within them value because God made them the way that God sees you and the way that God sees me. It means being willing to forgive that very thing that we do ourselves, that we so hate in other people, but we beg for mercy when we do it. We so despise it when other people do it. It's so easy. Can't you get your act together? But when I do it, please be gracious. God, help us to imitate God, being both one that has a mind and a heart for the law, but willing to forgive. Cliff Seiler yesterday, we had, we had breakfast and he had this t-shirt on. It's from a UMM. Uh, I guess it was UMM, wasn't it? Yeah, and it said, forgiveness is the key to true freedom. Forgiveness is the, tr the key to true freedom. Isn't that how it said? It I, I love that. And I mean, there's, there's so much there. There's, it's hard to reconcile with what that really means, but I, I have a, a, a few ideas, I'm sure you do too, but it's, it's easy, I think, for us to say that if you could just somehow forgive, then, then we would be walking with the divine in so many ways. That same God that, that knows you, knows all that you've done, knows all about you, loves you. I mean, really think about that. This is not some abstract, like, well, it you know, it's easy because they don't know all of it, all the story. So it's easy for them to love you because they only see this good side of you. We all present what we want people to see, you know, type of things. It's easy for this person to see you in a wonderful light because they've only seen you in a positive way because you're only showing them that. They only saw you on social media and what you post. 
and what you're posting makes your life look pretty doggone nice. But God knows it all, doesn't he? God sees it all. God knows you. And God loves you. That's the great mystery. That's the great mystery of faith is that it's not some cheap love. Have you ever had to really forgive someone, yeah? Have you ever had to really look someone in the eye who's hurt you and love them back? It's strength in that. It's not weakness. It takes strength to love someone. Take strength to forgive somebody. It's not weak to do it. And that's our God. That's our God. Therefore, be imitators of God. To imitate, we first need to know and experience the love of God. Do we know God's love? I think we do. Do we love God's love? <laughs> I think we do. I've seen it. I've seen you desire God, God's presence, God's precepts, God's ways, and God's love, and, and want it in your life. You pray for it for others. I've seen people in a room lifting people up. I've seen people in text messages and email messages. This last week, there have been more people coming in and out of hospitals and going in and praying for people and those that, that have needed a, a prayer and those that want to update and those that have, oh my word, this church has come together and lifted people up in prayer. Amen. 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 That's what we do. Because we give it to the great physician. We imitate God when we lift each other up. That's, that's what it's all about. To imitate God means to love what God loves. God loves the world. To imitate God means to love who God loves. Hint, that's everyone. As hard as that is to hear. Yeah, you know that. It's just... To love when and where God loves. Everywhere. All the time. To love how God loves. And to love why God loves. Why, God, do you love us? Why, God, do you love the world? Why, God? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his own son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world might be saved through him. John 3, 16 and 17. That's why. That's how. And he did it for us. He did it for you. And it's in this same very moment that God is always at work through the Christ. Communion. We're going to go to communion. This is the greatest display of God's imitation. God incarnate coming to the earth to show us what grace, forgiveness, truth really looks like in human form. The greatest imitator of God is God himself, Jesus Amen? Amen? The greatest imitator of God. So that whenever we have ourselves a, a question of, of where do I go? How do I, who's the credible source here? Who's the model? How do I look to Jesus? Look to Jesus. How does Jesus treat people? How does Jesus love people? And on the night in which he was betrayed, he met with his disciples in the upper room. And he took the loaf and he broke it, gave thanks to God and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat all of you. This is my body broken for you. And after the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, God, and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we will open and we will take together the body of Christ broken for you. Let us eat together. And in the same way that all of our bread comes from the one loaf of Christ's body, all of the cup comes from the one blood of Christ shed for you. Drink. Amen. Now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Will you go as an imitator of God today? Imitating that that is most truthful, that is most merciful and forgiving, that is most like Jesus. Always remembering that our greatest imitation of of God himself was God came to earth for you and for me, Jesus Christ. Go now and always in that love and that care. We've got a couple of kiddos that know me from, uh, from a long time ago, and I've taught some folks sign language, and I'm going to do the blessing with some sign language today. If you know it, feel free to do along. But it's in the name of God the Father. Jesus, the Son, is my favorite one, and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> now and forever. Amen. 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 God be with you. <laughs>